What is like one thing you notice between your 30s and 40s, just so I know? It's nice having like a brain that like works pretty well <laughs> <laughs> for like a few years so you can like do things like raise children, which you know, I'm, I'm not sure that they're that much harder to raise than dogs. What? Really? Yeah. You're comparing raising children to dogs? This is Dr. K, co-founder of Healthy Gamer and a psychiatrist. He streams on Twitch, hosting live interviews, helping a lot of streamers, and he's even helped me in the past. We're painting. Yes. Have you ever painted before using acrylic or anything? Um, I have not painted since I was probably under 10 years old. So it's been probably okay. 30 years since I painted. Uh, doing the math in my head, so you're like 35. I'm 40. 40, got it. Yeah. So are we going to try to paint from a feeling standpoint? It, the same, what our representation of feelings? That's a great idea. What feeling would you like to paint? Um, happiness, sadness. How about apprehension? Oh my god, that is so specific. Apprehension, like you're like, sorry, you're like nervous. Well, yeah, so, so like anxiety, uh -huh. but apprehension. So for example, I'm feeling apprehensive uh -huh. about painting because I haven't done it in 30 years. Wow. I'm not anxious. I'm not worried about the consequence. Nervous? Yeah. I'm a little nervous. Because I don't know how to do this. Did you always know you wanted kids? I never wanted kids. Damn. I chose intentionally to have kids, but I didn't like want kids. I didn't be like, oh my God, I cannot I wait kids. until I have progeny. But you ended up having them. Oh, absolutely. And very intentionally oh. and, and loved it. That's so interesting. Or love it still. My peers all are all like, nah, no kids for now, but you know, who knows how things will change in the future. I think that's what's tough is that it's, it's hard to plan your life around the future when you can't really control it. Things can change so fast. I find that way with friendship too. Like people you think are gonna be friends forever or whatever that you told yourself and you don't talk to them anymore. <laughs> what's your relationship like that makes you think that someone's gonna be friends forever? Mm, I think when I get attached to people, uh -huh. like I don't like investing time and energy into friendships that I won't last. So I go into friendship thinking like I want to make this last. You know, sometimes I've noticed that when people try really hard, mm -hmm. they end up actually sabotaging some of their relationships. Like you're doing too much. Yeah, right. Yeah, so, I so like I, I see this with like people who are like, oh, you know, I'm always the person who texts first. That's so sad though. Yeah, and, and I think part of it is that, you know, early on when you sort of take the responsibility of texting, then like they the other person do kind of doesn't. Oh, they take you for granted almost. Yeah. Are you going to TwitchCon or no? I, you know, I don't think so. I think we're... Traveled out? Yeah, it's, it's a lot and... Who takes care of the kids when you're gone? Um, so we, uh, usually family plus nanny. Do you see like at that age, like what they might grow up into? So I, I, I got a stylist for the streamies mm -hmm. and she was like totally into it. Oh, that's so cute. So she was like directing us and like offering suggestions and like, and then I like a little part of me got scared. Stylist is pretty cool though. Like, oh, I'm not worried about a stylist. If you want to be a stylist, that's not scary. What's scary is content creation and oh. just how much she like loves the camera. Oh, she likes the camera. Yeah. Ooh, I see what you mean by scared now. She's already better at taking pictures than I am. What would you do if your kid wanted to become a streamer though? I'd, I'd DM you and I'd say, hey, my kid wants to be a content creator. She's a girl. So I think that's the big challenge, right? Is like if, if she wants to do content creation, I think the problem is that a big part of, like in some ways I have it, I have a different experience. I was gonna say easy. I don't know if it's easy because I'm a dude, but. I think the internet treats men and women differently. Oh, so different, yeah. So it's it's hard because I, I was kind of secure and I developed into like an adult before I started streaming. Mm. Right, so I started streaming when I was 36. I don't know what I would do if, if I had a daughter and she wanted to stream because I know that comes with its whole issues as well. Yeah. But if they really, really want to do something, you know, who are you to outright ban them? You're their parent. Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess you're right. But then they might, what if they resent you? Like, and then this is what they really, 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 really want to do. Like, mom, dad, you don't understand. Like, I never wanted anything more than this. Like, I want to be a streamer. Are you going to still say no? Well, yeah, you could. You are their parent, but. 
Well, yeah, so I, I think resentment is not about saying yes or no. Resentment is about the way that you talk to your kids about the boundaries that you set. Mm. I, I find that, that an explanation makes a big difference for them. So, you so just it's explain. not just, yeah. And so, so trying to explain, you know, what's good and what's bad and why it's good and why it's bad. Mm -hmm. And I, I think also that, that, you know, when you're raising kids, I don't think it's about telling them necessarily what's good or bad, but really teaching them and sort of asking them. So like, you know, my kids like to watch TV first thing when they wake up on the weekend. <laughs> and all kids do, and I, yes. I did that when I was a kid, but just kind of inviting them to notice, okay, how do you feel after one hour of like watching TV in the morning, first thing in the morning? Right, and then like one hour becomes two hours and they like haven't had breakfast. And so then they start getting cranky and they get into a fight and all this kind of stuff. So just inviting them to notice the impact of stuff. That sounds great, just very responsible. And that was once again, quite the sigh. So what's, what's- I'm what, sorry, what? it just sounds so stressful to me. I don't think my job was that stressful actually. I think stress happens when you end up in situations that you didn't go into with your eyes open. You can enter a hard situation and know what you're getting into, and I think it's fine. It feels like you live in a different world. It seems more rewarding. What, what makes that more rewarding or like fulfilling? you're kind of affecting people real time. Uh, yeah, I, I, I get that. I, I think though that, you know, for the, the number of people I've talked to who are like suicidal and not feeling good about themselves, mm -hmm who have gone to streamers for solace of some kind, right? Because there's like one place that they can go mm -hmm. where like life is a little bit brighter, more entertaining, and they can forget their problems. Mm -hmm. And I think in a lot of ways that's like healthier than let's say like alcohol or pot or like <laughs> other things. I think that is the difference. You don't see it. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think that's, it, yeah. that's hard on y'all because what you do see very easily is the toxicity. You see when people are upset or angry or yeah. there's drama. And then and you I, get told, just ignore it. Yeah, I think it's sad when, as a society, we stopped allowing people to suffer because they're privileged. I see where they're coming from, though. Yeah, I do too. It is a privileged position. I totally get that. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you. And I'm, I'm not saying that privilege isn't better than not privilege, right? There's definitely like a lot of security and a lot of happiness mm -hmm. and a lot of freedom. There's a lot of positives from it. But I, I don't sure. think, I think if money, Actually, money does buy happiness it up does. until a point. I think the main thing to understand is that the happiness that comes from security is what money buys, absolutely. Yes. The challenge is that for a long time when we're unhappy, we believe, and, and this is true, right, that like more money and more stuff will make us happy. Like, oh, I want, a, I want to buy this game and mm -hmm. I can't afford the game. And then I get the game and now I have the game and now I'm happy. Mm -hmm. So our whole life we actually learn that getting stuff will make us happy. But the problem is all of the happiness of those things is temporary. And it never ends. <laughs> and it never ends. It never un ends. Until you learn how to appreciate what you, what have. you have. Right, so you can, you can have one piece of jewelry and then you can still like appreciate it on a, on a daily basis. But that requires like a cultivation of appreciation, uh, appreciating what you have as opposed to chasing something else. And appreciating what you have, that's just eventually learned? No. You have to learn it. I mean, I think the people who are lucky eventually learn it. But I think the sad thing is that a lot of, a lot people, of people don't, don't learn that though, right? They don't, yeah. <laughs> Tell me about your childhood. You said you were arrogant? I had a very like defensive arrogance of being like a smart kid. I was younger than all the other kids in my grade, so it means I sucked at sports. And so when you're, you know, in school, you're either a jock or a nerd. So you're I became a nerd. Um, but then the problem is if you think about what intelligent is, okay, that means effortless success. Things should be easy for you. Then what happens is once you realize like, okay, I'm a smart kid and sm things are easy for smart kids, that means you can't do anything hard, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. if it's hard, that means you're not smart. Mm -hmm. And so over time, like you drop out of things. So like I would start math competitions and it was fine as long as I was the smartest kid there, but eventually someone's, Smarter you have to work you. at it. Then you quit? Yeah. Oh. Right, because like if, if I have to work hard, that means, and that kid is beating me, but- And you're not smart. That means I'm not smart and it's all I've got left. Oh no, that's so sad. What got you out of that? I failed miserably in life and oh. then- um, How old were you? So I, I started failing in life probably around 15. That's really early to fail in life. S started failing. Oh, you and, started failing. You know, so like my grades started to slip. I started uh. to get C's. 
which if you're an Indian or Asian kid, a C is an F. It's a death sentence. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, in college, I actually started like chain failing classes. Chain failing classes? Yeah, like chain, like, you know, when you're like playing League or something or Valorant and you're feeding and then you queue up and you just lose more and more. Oh, we call it doom queuing, yeah. Yeah, Yeah. that was, I was doom queuing in IRL. And then eventually, like once I had no sense of like, you know, no pride left, no no arrogance. (laughs) Then I started really discovering who I am and how life works and things that I could be proud of. What is like one thing you notice between your 30s and 40s? Just so I know. I I think the the biggest difference (laughs) is that you can't count on your body the way that you used to. No, this is also depressing. (laughs) But I expected that, yeah. The other thing is that you've had a fully developed brain for a couple of years, which usually like helps out a lot. So it's nice having like a brain that like works pretty well (laughs) for like a few years so you can like do things like raise children. (laughs) That's a big one. Which, you know, I'm not sure that they're that much harder to raise than dogs. What? Really? Yeah. You're comparing raising children to dogs? I mean, so if you think about a dog, right? I mean, so, they, they're kind of like toddlers, but go on. Yeah, but the thing about kids is that they become more competent over time. You can make them do chores. So the, the really cool thing is that I, I don't make her do chores. She's like... She just does it on her own? Yeah, she's like, I want to learn how to do the dishes. And I'm like, all right, let's go. Okay, I'm just going to say you got like some good parenting or luck because I was not like that at six or eight or uh, even... Like... I, I think it's luck. I, I don't think... Because I don't... I mean, I don't... I'm Did not, you like, like doing great. the dishes when you were younger? No. <laughs> That's luck. It's, or it's luck. You did something right and you just don't know what it is. It's impossible to tell. That's why you don't stress over it. That's the other thing that you learn in your 30s to 40s. You don't stress over it. Yeah, because, like, I mean, like, what do you really control in this world? Not much. Not much. And you want to show our paintings? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so this, this is painting number one. I was drawing. what you were going for. I was going for apprehension, but I did not really end up there. So I, I started playing around by mixing some colors, and I really liked pink. Pink is nice. And then I did a lot of pink, Mm -hmm. and I was actually pretty happy with it at that point, but then I decided to experiment with other colors, and I started screwing it up. Yeah, so these are the two things, and then I actually did this one, Uh which was like, my favorite part of this was actually these two. Uh And then I tried to make that again, (laughs) and I did this. Is it raining? It is raining. Why is it raining? Because raining is blue, (laughs) because water is blue. Didn't you know that? And then those Um, are their footsteps. Yeah, those are their, uh, I think so. Yeah, those are their footsteps. This is my anxiety. Oh my goodness, it's she's, gorgeous. She's doing the thing, you know, like hugging herself. And I just put snow stuff because I was running out of time. I didn't know what to put there. Do you have anything else you want to talk about or say or shout out or anything? I, I'm good. Actually, the one shout out the thing that I have to say is thank you for helping me paint. I didn't really help you. You did it yourself. I, I did do it myself, but I, I think it, it from a, I would have never done this. So like literally, I haven't painted in 30 years. Mm, so 30 I, years is a long time. And I, I would have literally never have done I could have gone the rest of my life without painting. And you might still probably go the rest of your life without painting anyway. I don't think so. I think I'm going to paint. Really? You should yeah. paint with your daughters. It's I'm going so to. fun. I'm going and it's to. It's like very creative. It's an easy bonding activity. Yeah. And who knows? Your so kids I'm, might be like really, really, really good at it. That's episode, what is it? Uh, I don't really, I, I can't uh, keep track nine. anymore. Well, thank you, Dr. Key, for coming. Thank you. And good luck in your future psychology endeavors. And thank you. Making tangible differences to people around the world. Well, yeah, I mean, but I, I think you're making tangible differences. Oh, too. shucks. See you Seriously. next time.